Hey guys, Tybon Lander here. I'm standing in front of my uh, hybrid DJ setup and I thought I'd give you guys a little tutorial on how I do it. So what I've got in front of me are a couple controllers that control Ableton and a couple controllers that control Tractor. In order to sync them together, it's actually pretty easy. Um, there's settings in both uh, programs um, that will link them together with just a push of a button. And Tractor has a master MIDI clock so I can speed up and slow down the BPM of Tractor and Ableton will follow that exact BPM with zero latency. So what I've got here is this mixer and you can use any Tractor certified mixer uh, such as the Pioneer mixers or the Allen & Heath PX5 which is what I have right now uh, or the Zone 96 which is a really awesome mixer too. And all you need to do is plug the USB from your computer into the mixer and it's ready to go. So once I've got them synced up, I have Tractor running to channels A, B, and C, and I have Ableton running to channel D. Um, I can control Ableton just like I would any other track with the sliders right here, and I've got your three-band EQ, which I can lower the bass, control the mids and stuff like that on the mixer level, which is essential. I've got these controllers here, which control Tractor. Um, if you want to see how I do that, I've got a couple of videos on my YouTube channel that show how I DJ with Tractor. I've got a smaller monitor right here that just plugs HDMI straight into the um, computer itself, so it's not as big and bulky as a, as a laptop would be. And then I've got my two controllers that control Ableton itself. So in my Ableton project file, I've got eight channels that I've custom made uh, for my hybrid sets and I'm always tweaking them, changing them up, uh, modifying them depending on the gig I have or depending on the kind of set I want to play. But this here is an Ovation Launch Control XL and this is an Ableton Push 2. So the Launch Control XL is responsible for controlling the volumes of my eight channels which again get routed into there so there's a master volume and then there are sub volumes for every one of my eight tracks. Then each one of my tracks has a send return so I can give uh, specific effects to any of my <clears throat> Ableton tracks that are going at any time. Um, this comes with a pan defaulted in there but I override it with a high pass filter at the very end of each effects chain. I find that just works really good because if I've got like a really crazy synth that I want to introduce, I can lower the high pass filter all the way down and just kind of bring the volume up and gradually increase the intensity with a high pass filter and bring it out and, you know, be creative and do cool stuff like that. So <clears throat> then I've got the push two. The push two controls all of the clips that I want to play and the modulation parameters that I have set for every single, um, track. So for example, if I've got a synth, I've got 16 macros for every instrument rack on that synth that I can, that I can control um, right up here. So I can, you know, the attack, decay, stain, release, uh, sustain, release on anything, or I can have a delay set up. The sky's really the limit. And I'll get into that in just a second when I dive into the Ableton project file with you. Um, so I really take this more as a DJing than a DJing with playing my own tracks. I don't really play my own tracks on Ableton. If I do have a track that I wanna play, I'll actually have it mastered and play it just like I would any other track. This is more of like a tool for me to be able to introduce um, a synth on the fourth channel, a cool loop that I've made, um, some 909 grooves, uh, hot, some 909 top end grooves, um, drones, any kind of thing, and I'm not taking over with live. I might be adding like two different things at a time, maybe three on top of a track that's already playing. So consider this here like another track that I'm playing, but not, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, um, that is my setup in a nutshell. Uh, next up, I'm going to just go right into Ableton and show you some of the tricks that I've learned while experimenting with this um, and hopefully I'll inspire somebody to do the same. Cheers! Alright so here's my Ableton project file. I've got eight different tracks uh, laid out that are controlled by the Innovation Launch Control. 
couple extra ones off to the side, uh, including a kick that I used just for side chaining. I don't actually put a kick in the hybrid set. I leave that up to the tracks that I play in tractor. Um, gives me uh, an extra slot for an extra synth. So in order to sync Ableton and Tracker together, it's actually really simple. Um, all you need to do is make sure this link button in Ableton is pushed and activated. If you don't see that, you can go into your settings and enable it. Um, and then in Tractor, you open up the settings right here. You go to external sync. You select link and MIDI clock so that they can talk to each other. And then the next step Make sure your quantize is turned on, everything synced together, and then you hit this link button and you will get a notification down here that says one link peer. And you can see that if I have 137.36, I bring it up to 140. You can see that my BPM right here follows along at 140.16. And then you just have to make sure that your uh, main out uh, gets routed into the actual mixer. So if I go into configure, make sure my mixer is selected, go into output config, hit seven and eight, and seven and eight is channel four for most mixers. So then you select your main out for seven and eight, and then anything that goes out of Ableton goes out of channel four on the Allen and Heath mixer that I'm currently using. So for the instrument racks that I use, I need to give a shout out to Another Machines. Uh, he creates all sorts of innovative instrument racks and effects racks, and uh, I use quite a bit of them in my production, um, and I use quite a bit of them in my hybrid sets. What they are, they're instrument racks that come preloaded with a whole bunch of different variations, and he also supplies a bunch of different MIDI clips, but I like to either use his or make my own using a sequencer and kind of experiment with all these macros that are set up. So these macros all control various different uh, parameters along the instrument rack chain, um, and you can come up with completely different sounds based on the parameters of these macros. And if you get a macro uh, combination that you like, you use this uh, variation section, which you can access with one of these guys. There we go. Um, and what that does is it'll save the positions of these macros into a variation. You can see I've got like 58 different variations. So anytime you hit play on a certain uh, macro right here, it will swap and change the settings for you. So you can actually come up with completely different sounds uh, along the effects chain for whatever you want. So that being said, one cool thing that I like to do with um, these macros is program a automation for every single macro into a specific MIDI clip. So what I was doing before took actually a lot of time because I wanted every single MIDI clip that I have to be different, not just the MIDI pattern, but the sounds that come out of it. Um, so I was literally going into the auto automation envelope for a specific uh, sequence and literally just going, clicking here, automating it, going to the next one, automating it. So I would do that 16 times per MIDI clip. So for the first one that I did, there was a lot of prep work involved. Uh, it wasn't until a little bit later I got sick of doing this, I decided to search and see if there was an easier way. Ableton doesn't actually let you automate variations natively, which was frustrating, um, but I did some searching and I found this M4L developer named Ableton Drummer, and he has developed this really cool Max for Live device that actually lets you automate uh, your variations. So really, it's called Automated Rack Variation, and you simply just hit Map to Rack, turn it off and then on, you can see that it is now mapped to my Another Machine's spike device. And you can see that for this MIDI clip that I'm using, it's mapped to the variation of 47. So when I take a MIDI clip and I play it, Each MIDI clip is different and it takes me a fraction of the time that it used to. One other thing I need to mention too is uh, it's really a good idea to um, set the maximum volume on each of your clips uh, and map them to the MIDI device so they don't go higher than you need them to. So do a little bit of gain staging before 
you decide to take this out and play. So for example, this guy here will sound, you know, gets a bit too loud at zero. So say I want it at minus six, I'm just going to uh, hit the map button and you can see that right here. Um, select what I'm using and you can see right here for spike, uh, the max is at zero decibels. Um, and my innovation launch control goes up to a maximum of plus six. I do not want to go to plus six because I could bust some eardrums and sound really awful. So you set the maximum uh, to the maximum that it can go and the sliders on your um, launch control won't go any higher than what you set. You can see I've got a different, a whole bunch of different maximum volumes set right here. So that is something you got to prepare for so you don't hurt anybody. So I'll just go through the chain that I have. So I've just got a basic 909 kit right here. And I've got some drum loops. Then I've got some uh, filtered out effects. Then have you seen before, I've got that spike which is really cool for hypnotic sounds. Then I'm using another machine's uh, magnitude. Then I've got Wavetable, which is a, or a Wavecraft 2, which is a Wavetail instrument that makes some really cool kind of percussive sounds. Then I've got some drones. And then I've got another another machine's device that makes some cool wishy-washy uh, risers and whatnot. And I've also been experimenting with the granulator to make some really cool effects. So I've made a, a granulator uh, effects chain, which can make some pretty cool stuff if I ever want to bring that in. So really the sky's the limit with what you want to do and every single DJ set or everything I program is different. Um, that's what keeps it interesting. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to play you a real quick demo just to show you what everything sounds like with a kick drum. I'm going to just play a loop over here in Tractor of a new Rennie Wise track uh, on moving pressure. So we've got a really good kick and it's a perfect example of how things will sound. All right, here we go.